Hi, in this video, I'm going to talk about confocal microscopy. So, unless other microscopy, confocal microscopy works on the principle of fluorescence. So, in confocal microscopy, we must have a laser, laser module. A laser module. From this laser module, laser would be focused onto other spots. And a laser would go to uh, the particular specimen and illuminate the specimen uh, in a tight spot and that's the property of laser so here we have a dichroic mirror here we have a lens and say here we have our objective lens now let us illuminate the specimen which is present here our specimen is present here in a slide say for instance is a cell and now let's illuminate it with a blue light so laser would go to this dichroic mirror it would be reflected down through the objective lens it would be tightly focused onto a diffracted diffraction limited spot into the specimen so uh, that's the property of laser and uh, le due to its coherence high degree of spatial coherence laser could be tightly focused onto a particular spot onto a specimen and uh, this is called a waste a waste is produced and this is our excited light so as per our uh, basic diagram of the fluorescence if it is our s0 state and it's our s1 excited state when we hit uh, the specimen with a light uh, with a uh, blue light it would get up in the S1 state. So this is the excitation beam. And what will happen next from a point in the specimen, the emission beam would go through the objective and pass through this dichroic mirror and hit the detector. Here you can see uh, that it, it, it's the emission light and also what another thing could happen that other points in the other focal plane could be illuminated by that same excitation light so other lights from other point could also get into the detector if it get into the detector it will produce a lot of blur that happens in the fluorescence microscopy but in confocal we have a particular pinhole which reduces this out of focus lights only allows the light to pass which is in focus that means the point in the sample is confocal that means the same foci with the pinhole the pinhole is confocal with this point the pinhole is confocal with the this point that is why the name is confocal after that it would hit the detector and detector would hit the uh, a detector would sense the light and what happens after so in our so back to our uh, fluorescence Zablonsky diagram so when after emission after excitation from S0 to S1 state it will get back to its ground state at that time it would emit an uh, energy which is co which correspond to a particular wavelength and here uh, for say for instance our sample is stained with GFP and for GFP our excitation wavelength is 488 nanometer and our emission wavelength is kind of uh, 509 emission peak is 509 nanometer that means in green and it's in blue so the heart of the confocal is this pinhole so how this pinhole diameter is regulated we will see in a moment another important uh, aspect of confocal microscopy is called optical sectioning optical sectioning optical sectioning so uh, here we have a confocal objective lens we have a confocal objective lens so for instance and this is the, the z axis and here we have a spherical specimen so at this instance, say for, in, uh, uh, say for at this instance, the lens is taking light from this focal plane 
and detector is detecting. So if the lens is moving around the Z axis, then it has moved around the Z axis and come here. So now it can, it is able to image even the deeper focal points. It is able to image from the uh, deep uh, focal point of the sample. Now what happened after that it will image a particular from one plane and after that it will reconstruct the whole image it will reconstruct the whole image plane by plane and pixel by pixel it will build up the whole image plane by plane and pixel by pixel so this is the property of optical sectioning so actually the image is not a single image image is a composite image of at least some 40 to 43 sections and all so say for instance how confocal creates uh, the image say for here we have a smiley face over here so confocal would do what confocal the laser of confocal would scan this image point by point so it is scanning the image point by point it's not taking the whole picture at a time rather it's scanning point by point and then it will reconstruct the whole image so it's all about point scanning and reconstruction so it's point scanning and reconstruction now we will look about the detector of the confocal so you know in the detector section of the confocal microscope we have something called dynode we have something called dynode arrangement it's nothing but a photocathode so say for instance this light will go and hit the detector the detector photocathode this is the photocathode and we have a series of arrangement of this kind of cathode such that when light hits here photoelectric effect will occur and each time the effects get multiplied that is why the name is photo multiplier tube as I have told that confocal is a point scanning method so in confocal we are scanning point by point and gathering information from each points so the light coming from one point could be very small and very little amount of light could be available and uh, to amp uh, without amplifying that particular uh, light coming from that point we are not able to get the signal so for get gaining the signal this technology is photomultiplier tube it's also called PMT it's a photomultiplier tube uh, as the name suggests it's multiplying the uh, the it's multiplying the uh, light coming from uh, the specimen and uh, it's showing us uh, uh, amplified light Another thing is the pinhole. Pinhole diameter of the confocal is very important. The pinhole diameter of the confocal is very important. And how to set the pinhole diameter? If the pinhole is too big, then what happens is out of focus lights can get inside and produce a blur. The image quality would be terrible and it would be like fluorescence microscope. But we don't want. But if the pinhole is too narrow, then we will lose a lot of information needful information we will lose so pinhole diameter should be regulated and how it is regulated so uh, if we draw intensity profile coming from any particular point of the specimen so we will see we have this kind of intensity distribution and here I am drawing a airy disk here I am drawing a airy disk pattern corresponding to that particular uh, intensity profile so our pinhole diameter have to be set in such that this portion of the intensity we can capture if our pinhole diameter is very narrow we will miss a huge portion of our intensity and if our pinhole diameter is big then definitely we can gain more intensity but side by side we will gain out of focus light from other focal point that is why our pinhole diameter should be ideally one airy unit one airy unit so the pinhole diameter 
from Riley criterion it's calculated like 1.22 lambda by numerical aperture here numerical aperture would be numerical aperture of lens and that is why uh, the pinhole diameter have to be regulated or otherwise we won't get a sharp and crisp image and so uh, as per summary we can say the confocal microscope works just like a fluorescent microscope apart from the fluorescent microscope don't have a pinhole but confocal has a pinhole and a fancy way how uh, confocal can actually reduce the out of focus light and it also has the ability of the optical sectioning and by which it uh, can take image plane by plane and reconstruct all the plane and it will give us a maximum intensity map it will give us a maximum intensity projection and uh, that could that would uh, have information from all the planes hope you liked it please su subscribe hope you enjoyed thanks